Oh, no, I was just saying if you wanted to sit here. Horizontal consensus. And about what happened this past week is, um, it's not I do think that it, there is an opportunity on Facebook to have really meaningful conversations. Maybe not always, but there is, I've learned a lot through my interactions there. <coughs> and I try to be, I've tried to be very reasonable in my words with specific individuals in specific situations. But recently I've started to wonder if I'm not part of the problem too in trying to address it the way I'm addressing it. So I would ask that one of the things we do throughout this is be honest with each other and give honest feedback. And if somebody's part of the problem, tell them they're part of the problem because they don't necessarily know. And, I'm, and I guess I'm not telling you to tell anybody else but me. If I'm part of the problem, tell me so I can change it. Uh, because I, I, me too. I feel like we all need to be open to what we don't know about ourselves and the way that we communicate. Um, and that might do a lot in helping us to develop a more cohesive consensus, consensus, consensus process based on trust and experience. Um, are we ready to go over to the non-aggression principle at this point? Uh, I just wanted to add one more thing. Oh, okay. Um, okay good. Just <laughs> as far as understanding each other, um, I found a really good tool is to get to know what each other reads because you often aren't speaking the language of the other people. So I wanted to actually be able to understand concepts. So I went out and read um, Atlas Shrugged just to kind of understand more the people that were talking to me about those principles. Because I had no idea what the philosophy was inside that book. I just knew what I heard people talk about. It. And just reading that helped me understand the language and helped me communicate better to those people that, that put forward those ideas and helps me argue with them a lot more fluidly instead of hitting a wall at the time because we don't we don't use the same dialogue. And, uh, that that really has helped me a lot more communication. Thank you for what you said. And um, you're right because I was I kept saying this is not a debate group and yet I kept debating. So I'm going to go back and erase every post <laughs> that I have on those pages that is not related to direct action. And I, personally, I'm going to commit to not uh, debate issues, uh, certainly uh, certainly not on event pages and things that have to do with action. We have separate groups for that, and, and that, has, I think, has um, uh, worked well. I mean, when someone posts something that's inflammatory, you know, you feel like responding to it. But I think in the end it would have been best just to ignore it. Um, you know, if, if the certain inflammatory posts sat there with no response and no comments on them, instead of 500 comments on them, then it would have, it would have uh, better you know, reflected, I think, people's distaste for the overall post, just letting it drop off the page. Are you be, saying you're part of the problem? What's that? I said, are you saying you were part of the problem? I, I think I may have been. <laughs> William, I don't believe it. You all been there. No, he was. Bruce has. I'm not sure I'm understanding what I'm hearing. I'm just going to say this about it. If I flip a coin, assuming that it's not going to land on its side, I know that it's going to be heads or tails. After that, I've got another debate. Which is it going to be? Heads or tails? Which of these possibilities? And even if I figured that out, there would probably be another debate. How many people in the history of this country have been killed running across railroad tracks because they didn't figure the simple possibility that the train might be there? So at this point, what are the possibilities, probabilities, and what is argument? How do you differentiate? I think... Um I think right now what's going on is everybody's sort of talking about these problems that we know exist and everybody has their ideas of what those solutions should be so that would be the heads or the tails um, but there's all these other people who have all these other coins that they want included in the conversation and ideas that we haven't thought of yet so I think that there's going to have to be some kind of debates and conversations about solutions to problems because it's not all black yeah. Yeah. All right. We want to wrap up this.
this topic. Is anybody, anybody okay with wrapping up this topic? So, Dan, you want to do the non-aggression principle? Sure. All right. Ah, hey, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I should have got here for the chair. I need to pick guy. Stuff this way. All right. Feel free to use that chair or this one. It's, yeah. Concise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> um, a friend of mine, he was a roommate for a bit. Actually, I think my condo is still his address. Brian Wright wrote this book. It's called The Sacred Non-Aggression Principle, and I have a bunch of copies of it. And uh, for those who are interested, you know, $5 each. Um, what, what he's done here is he's explained it, you know, starts out with the uh, kindergarten principles of, you know, don't hit, don't steal, don't lie, don't cheat, and, and works its way all the way through into how implementing that generally, you know, in whatever jurisdiction you can manage it, how it could produce prosperity. And, uh, and so basically the, the sacred non-aggression or the non-aggression principle is that you do not initiate force, that you do not support others who initiate force. And, and it's not about pacifism. If force is initiated, you do get to defend yourself. Uh, that's why some of us uh, carry guns. I usually carry a, a uh, handgun myself, but my holster is broken, and if I can't carry it safely, I'm not going to carry it. And uh, so I didn't bring it today, but uh, those guns, you know, in the hands of somebody who honors the non-initiation of force are, are never going to be an issue for anyone. And... Uh, I mean, I think, I mean, this is the, the big gaffe we have right here, is that these people over here, uh, they know, some of them know that they're initiating force. They, they're, they're wanting to, uh, you know, they like taxes. They, taxes are an initiation of force. Um, it's, it's, you know, we're all used to taxes. We've had them for all of our lives, for the, the life of this whole country. But taxation cannot be done without the initiation of force. If I principally do not want to pay taxes because I know what they're doing with my money, and I, 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 I stop paying those taxes and, and then they'll send letters to me. I ignore the letters. Eventually somebody will come to my door and they'll come to my door with a gun. And I, all I'm doing is I'm, I'm being principled and, and my not giving them money that they're going out and destroying things with. And uh, so basically, uh, I don't know if, if they're consciously going there or not, but uh, this book is, is kind of a nice little thing. It's, an engineer wrote it, a technical writer. So, you know, some people might think it's a little bit dry, but but it really lays lays it out really well. And, you know, he comes up with three trillion dollars worth of benefits, kind of loosely, for for you know America taking on the non-aggression principle. Uh, the drug war is a huge, you know, violation of the non-aggression principle, and, uh, and and a part of that is this uh, restriction of industrial hemp. Can you imagine the industry that could be created around the growth of industrial hemp across the country? Uh, you know, I mean, there's just, uh, you know, so, what's the, so many things. What's the core of the non-aggression principle? I mean, if you had to dumb it down to like a couple sentences, what would well, it be? Well, you know, very simply, you know, it, it, you know, human interaction does not involve the initiation of force. Another word for it, people like to be called voluntarists. Uh, the, the libertarian movement started in the in the, 60, uh, the 70s, 
and it was about the non-initiation of force. It was not about the Libertarian Party. Libertarian Party was a takeover by uh, people with money that wanted to, you know, in, take over the, the the initiation of force of the government and do what they wanted to do with it. So those of us that that, that believe in this, you know, are are not looking for anybody to point guns at anyone. So, yeah. any questions? So we're gonna. If I'm correct, we yeah. start here and go around. If anyone has anything they'd like to oh, add yeah. or yeah. questions about the non-aggression principle. Well, I'm like, like what Dylan said, like, I'm very new. I started because of him. He would tell me Welcome. about the politics. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Um, he would tell me about politics and how the government's working. He's very against it, I'm very against it, and I feel like, like I'm not too positive what the man, like, the nine, uh, 99, yeah, that is, like, really is and stuff, like, at the moment, but, like, I still, like, he reads me stuff, and I, like, listen, like, very closely, because, like, I want to learn more about it, but mm -hmm. I feel like, um, like I was saying earlier, how there's ways that things can be, like, like actually be in like taxes I don't, I don't I'm 18 I'm gonna be paying like taxes once I like have my place and get a job and there's just certain things that we all shouldn't be taxed for well like you know I actually don't think that there should be anything anybody should be taxed for I think that if if something is good enough people will pay for it you know there is no reason to force people to pay for things that, uh, you know, I, you know I, I mean, it boils down to the free market gets involved, and, and that's a, a dangerous statement in this group to some degree. But uh, going yeah. I think, like, <laughs> unless, unless there's a specific question, we probably don't want commentary after each person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's going to okay. take a long time. Yeah. Um, it sounds like a good principle to me. Well, I, there's a few copies here, and I have more in the in the car. So if, if anybody wants to buy them, I'm, uh, I, you know, if they don't have five dollars, uh, I might be persuaded to get a give you a scholarship on it. But you have to promise to read it. I'll sponsor somebody on a scholarship if they want a book. Okay. There's a great video online that kind of touches it. It's at the core of the non-aggression principle. It's called the philosophy of liberty. And it's a stick figure video. You can just search on YouTube the philosophy of liberty. It's got, I, I, it's been taken down a couple times. It's got millions of views. Um, it might not, the latest version might not have millions of views, but uh, it's a very common video that gets passed around, that people will pass around every couple years. They'll put it back on their wall. And it wakes a lot of people up to the non-aggression principle. To what it really means in the real world and how by supporting this you are actually supporting the use of a gun at somebody's head at the end of the day if you support the drug war you support somebody to come in and put a drug put a gun to somebody's head to tell them what they can put in and who owns their body so uh, so it's called the philosophy of liberty it's a YouTube I encourage anyone who doesn't really understand the concept yet to go and find that on YouTube and watch that once or twice and share it with your friends. It's actually been translated into dozens of languages too by, uh, by Ernie Hancock. Uh, my take on it, the way I would just sum it up, is in the end it is sort of arbitrary, but we have to agree on something. And if we can agree to separate the arena of ideas from, from the physical arena as far as competition goes, then we can get, um, we can make more progress. Because what happens is, is, as long as the competition of ideas remains a competition of ideas, then the best idea is going to win out in the end. Because you're going to be able to convince people if if you're coherent and if you're right, 
you're going to be able to convince people of the right ideas and then people can follow through on those in the real world. The problem is when people have bad ideas and they're unable to gain consensus and then they decide that they're right anyways and everyone needs to start doing things this way because this is the right way regardless of the fact that we don't have consensus or the consent of the governed and now we're going to start using force to push people uh, to push our ideas onto people that this is the way it's going to be and then if you don't do things this way escalation 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 right police jails SWAT teams court actions suing people and all of this violence is a result of people you know trying to push forward a bad idea in the physical world instead of allowing the ideas to compete. I have no. Okay. <laughs> Non-aggression is good, don't attack people. Person once said that another person's freedom ends, but my nose begins. And I agree with that. But the idea of aggression is so entrenched in this country that I would not partake in anything that would try to stop it because I would not even see the beginning of that stop in my lifetime. Just like taxes, there's no use attacking something that you're going to have to turn old and gray in. It should be a reasonable time period. But, as far as aggression goes, it all depends what form it's taking. Physical form of aggression, no. No. Verbal aggression, I think you get a little spicy. <laughs> but, uh, outside of that, you can't do anything because that's just giving them an excuse to beat you over there. And once you do that, they win. See what they did? We told you they were going to do that. And they're going to give you enough rope to hang yourself. To let you go ahead with that. So stay still, stay calm, and keep convincing. Especially in China. As far as beginning uh, the non-aggression principle, I'm going to take a step right now and say that I declare peace to everyone here. And I declare peace to that group over there. And I even declare peace to the state. I know that we're working against them right now, but I still, I still declare peace to the people, the people in the state because they're not my enemies, they're just friends I haven't converted yet. Just to add a little bit, the you know what people generally consider aggression is where harm occurs. You know, you know maybe you can shout in somebody's ear and they get to lose a little bit of uh, <laughs> of hearing or something like that. But the, the, you know that the, the the idea of, of speech, I, I think, is not included as, as you know as part of aggression and, and not in my mind. But we should be nice to each other. And, and you know what? It's not the people of the state that, that are the problem. It's their actions and, uh, and their, their, their ignorance about what they represent. And I think we can do something about that. Are we comfortable with the non-aggression policy moving on to the next item? Okay, so the next item is... Yep. Well, I have to... About aggression. If I have to say something about this group or that group or that person, and I believe that they're doing that, and it's a very great negative, that negative is going to fall on them. And in that way, it can be aggressive, even verbal. And they may be Thank you. Yes. Um, I think I'm so the next thing on the agenda is de-escalation and facilitation. Um, under consensus process. Um, 
that I think was Alpha. Alpha. That was the de de escalation and facilitation during direct action. Yeah. So, would you like to start that conversation? When there is a. Um, you gotta, I can't hear you. When, when there is a conflict, like what happened online, how to uh, uh, de escalate that? And I wanted to hear everybody's uh, uh, input on it. What would be a, a best solution to de-escalate when, the, when, an, uh, when a conflict arises? So when a conflict arises, the best way to de-escalate, um, Cecilia would like us to go around. Why don't you start? Or Cecilia, would you like to start? Well, this was brought up at the NatGat and uh, we didn't get into it uh, that much. It was just uh, 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 like everybody is um, in disagreement uh, on, but what I wanted to, uh, that, that was their idea. I wanted to hear your ideas. So, because there is a need, uh, a facilitation like this in a, in a uh, calm way is different from when there is a conflict going on. So what we can learn from each other on how, how to uh, navigate it. I don't know the answer to that. To, uh, uh, okay, so you want to have a conversation about it? Yeah. Okay. I have a question. Is the, on the, is the boundaries of this um, de-escalating during an action? de-escalating against the state, or are we talking about interpersonally in, in these groups? I'm, I'm unclear. I think we're going to start it in, in our group because what we learn in our group, that's what we can uh, use on, on the outside, from the inside to the outside. How we would de-escalate de with each other? Yes. part of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. I've got a couple of thoughts. I don't know if they would help. Um, I tend to be very opinionated and it's something that I'm not necessarily proud of, but it's, it's the way I am. So if a conflict comes up, I have to kind of step back and decide whether it's worth it for me to continue engaged because if I continue to engage I'm going to get angrier and I'm going to get more worked up and I don't want to feel that way and so if the other person is getting worked up I tend to just step back perhaps agree to disagree let them you know get all worked up and I'm just going to say look it's not worth it for me for my emotional state to continue to get worked up I'm going to have my opinions, whether they're right or wrong. I'm comfortable with my opinion, and maybe I'll find somebody else who will share that opinion with me, and I can find camaraderie there. But in the end, I, I have to be with myself, and I've got to be comfortable with myself. So I just would step back, agree to disagree, say, we're not going to resolve this. You're entitled to yours, I'm entitled to mine, and I'm not going to change. And, and, and just and let it go. Just let it go. Because everybody's an individual, and we're all going to have differences. But you've got to just let that go and be comfortable with yourself, and perhaps maybe just learn from each other, and and take what you can from the other person. If it, if you agree with it, take it. If you don't agree with it, reject it. But you've got to just be with yourself and just let it go. Agree to disagree. Well, people can go from zero to sixty really quick, and unless you have somebody with you that you trust, okay? The chances of being calmed down lessen. But if you know you're going to be in a confrontation, at least pay yourself up or triple yourself up so there are at least three of you together. And if the other two, and you've already agreed to this, if the other two say to you, you're going too fast, then pull back because everything is happening so quick, so fast, it's probably the only chance of it. Uh, 
I guess I would say what we're doing here in terms of continuing our discussion after that group kind of created a conflict and decided to pull away from our group, what we're doing is probably, I would say, a good resolution. We're just, we're choosing to not engage them, not to try and fight with them. We're having our own discussion here. And that mutual respect is kind of just a key to what I see, is just listening to what people say and respecting their opinion. Mark, did you have something you want to say? It's completely, I mean, it's sort there's a online warfare going on right now. Okay. About the splinter. Yeah, there's a petition going around and whatnot. So. Maybe my military background, whatever whatever ideals I had when I joined to protect and serve, that's always kind of been like somebody can can attack me as long as it's not physically bothering me. I might say something, but it's not it's not a problem. But where I have a problem is when somebody is oppressing someone else that cannot stand up for themselves, whether it be physically or or, 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 or mentally. And that's where I have that's where I kind of unhinge and you know, that's something that I need to work on. I, I got a copy of the book, I'm gonna try. But to me, that's aggression against me as well, and society, and that's where I lose it. So I did stand up, and I'm, I, I'm probably a big part of the problem. I, I tried from the beginning, though, to include everybody. I shut up when I didn't agree with somebody because they said they were a socialist for this, and, and you know, lo and behold, I, I find myself leaning in a lot of uh, manners towards a lot of things socialist. Great, that's awesome. So. 
I can learn and educate. That's what this has been about for me. But I need you or, or somebody that is my friend, or that I consider my friend, you know, my fellow occupier, to, to say, you know what, look, I see, see what's going on and, and maybe it's time for you to step back because, you know, I mean, I, I am going to take it to that place. So feel free, I guess this is saying, feel free to tell me to shut up um, when you feel that, that, that I'm out of line because yeah, I will, you know, as you know, take it there. Yeah. I was here with bells on today. <laughs> well, I'd like to say one of the most important ways to de-escalate in this group is to become friends. Uh, get to know each other and also know who your neutral ground is if you're having an argument with someone know someone find the person that's going to be the, the neutral ground that will tell you shut up you're being an idiot because uh, I often have to find that person online who just will remind me you know first world problems bro or you know other things that Oh, just be able be able to get into those heated arguments with each other and still be friends. Because I have been in so many heated arguments with people, but I still consider them friends no matter what. And I still, even even that group out there, I'll still invite most of them to the TV other than the ones who have been banned. Um, but I have TV parties where I'm just trying to bring the right and left together to actually talk to one another and just party, drink beers, and enjoy each other's company. Uh, I'm not left or right. Am I invited? You are absolutely invited. All post-partisan uh, individuals are invited. I wanted to add about uh, what Mark said, because uh, during this uh, conversation, I wasn't part of the... Uh, I wasn't part of the discussion, and uh, was I wasn't attacked. But I saw that he is marginalizing women, and what is in a, a, when I I have a very strong uh, principle on that that an assault to one is an assault to me. Whatever a human being is assaulted is assaulted to me. So I will react, and I will go to uh, the middle ground and find out. And that's what exactly what I did. I keep focus and and. and uh, being in, uh, neutral, a voice of reason, and I get to and and go through all the posts and read it very carefully, examine it one by one. Where is it? This it just started, and I posted it, and I found uh, all, all that uh, thing. Maybe uh, you can tell me if uh, being. Uh, some somebody is assaulted. I will be next to you. I will be fight for you. I will stand up for uh, 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 your rights. But if if you are my friend and you are wrong, you're wrong. I won't stand with the wrong. I will always stand with the voice of reason. And, and that's what I did. Oh, we have to go around this way. Yeah. Oh, we have to go around this way. We started over here. The escalation is something that I need to learn to do. I have a more powerful voice than most people. Just the loudness of it. And I use that. And, and it's just not nice. And um, I think, you know, what... What I need to learn is when there's when there's you know a raising ire between me and somebody I'm interacting with, whether it's on the web, you know, face to face, over the phone. Uh, I I I need to uh, ask them questions and get them talking and and uh, let go of some of the things I want to say, like right now and very loudly. And, and and listen and try to try to actually uh, focus on what the core issue. There's always a, a kernel deep down inside any disagreement that that often never gets accessed. And uh, I'm just saying that you know if you if you use your brain and your and, and your communication skills, uh, you can you know maybe successfully do that. 
I'm going to try to go for Anyway, so that's my, my thing. said is that uh, getting to know one another. A friend of mine is now a representative in North Carolina and he won that he's there because when he first started attending the meetings to get in through the process to get his face out there he would be, the, the people would want to come up and talk about what they don't agree with him about. And he's like and, and his response was, was brilliant. It was, you know, I just got here we don't really know each other. How about we talk about what we do agree on for now, and when we get to after we get to know each other, we can talk about things we don't agree on more in depth. And it was a very successful thing that he used. And it, nobody, you know, it depends on the time of day. You know, I've moderated a big uh, internet forum for years, and sometimes I lose my cool. Now I'm pretty good at keeping my cool. But everybody, you know, depending on what happens that day, everybody says we all need to learn, and we do all need to learn more, and practice it, and practice it, and practice it, and we'll get better and better. I would say that um, one of the biggest things, yeah, there's a story, uh, it's not even a story, it's a poem, right? Gravestone, here lies the body of John Doe. He died maintaining his right of way. He was right, dead right as he sped along, but he's just as dead as if he was wrong. And you can apply this to traffic. Okay, you can say, oh, there's, legally, I have the right of way. I'm right. But when that semi truck is coming, it doesn't do any good to have the right of way and, and pull out. You're still going to get cream. And there are, there are times when uh, being right is just not that important. Actually, mm -hmm. being right falls so down the ladder of importance to actually getting something accomplished or achieving your goal. And um, so, yeah, I guess distinguishing the things that are actually important, that are core, that this is a principle that I can't compromise, I have to take a stand here, and all of the things that you can just let them be right, let them think they're right, just let it go, and, and stay focused and man -made. And in the case of this movement, those things are going to be action-oriented things, not philosophical things, I think. Um, i say for de-escalation, one, don't argue so much online, do it in person. And then, <laughs> if things are getting heated, make a joke, then offer a drink. <laughs> the, uh, the Obama approach, get a beer together. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Sit down for a beer. step to de-escalating things is to listen. Thank you. <laughs> because, first of all, you might learn something. You'll learn better where, where your opponent is coming from, so you'll better be able to understand what it is you're really discussing. And, by showing the respect of listening first, it tends to increase the chances that you will then be listened to. And also, one thing, to, another way of approaching any discussion where you've got two polar opposites and you're trying to de-escalate or not argue, 
think of it as a scale from 0 to 10 or two polar opposites, left to right, whatever. And once you've taken that first step to listen, kind of get an idea of where that person is on that scale. So that rather than trying to cram, try to force them from one side to the other completely, in one sentence, which is unlikely, you might be able to nudge from somebody from a five to a six, or six to a seven, or whatever, however you're gauging that. And, uh, and I certainly concur that being right isn't all that is cracked up. Sometimes it's best to be a, a truth seeker rather than a defender of a particular position. I got a quick question. Completely off topic. Where's the nearest Western? Are there porta potties out here? The state house doors are right. I'm guessing you could probably use the one over here where Arnie's office is. Tatey, where did you just get those coffees? It's just a little storefront. Okay. I don't think they would have it. And everything here is closed. The barley house over here, are they open to that? Closed. Um, Everything's yeah. closed. Yeah, yeah, seriously. There's like a burrito joint a block down here that we went to. I'd imagine maybe they'd be open. Yeah, I went to CVS right. and they didn't have one. What? Well, Bagel work. Anybody have anything else that they want to say about the explanation at this point? Or should we move on to the next topic? Uh -huh. If you have a prepared phrase, you can look at the person and say, you're getting me angry. You know how to push my buttons. I think you might be smarter than I am. So it's better I shouldn't talk to you. Say those four sentences, and you're out of it. Yeah, if you say that head. one sentence, I think you're smarter than me, you're done. So if you just say, I'm you're not as smart as you, I'm going to have to walk away. <laughs> Manatee is the best thing you can use. Um, so are we ready to go on to direct actions at this point? Talk about where we're at? All right. Um, I will... write down what's currently being worked on.